Welcome artists. In this video, we are going to learn how to paint a beautiful desert inspired pumpkin. Grab your watercolor paper, a ruler, pencil, and eraser. We're going to divide our paper into four parts. Grab the ruler, draw very lightly a vertical line going down the center of your paper. Next, we're going to draw a horizontal line going across a little lower than halfway. This is going to help us with our proportion and placement of our objects. Again, draw lightly. These are just guidelines and we'll be erasing them. Next, let's begin our pumpkin by just drawing one big curved line in the two bottom sections or rectangles of the quadrants that we drew. So draw one big curved line on the left and bring that same curved line up to the right. Now we're gonna work on our jack-o'-lantern's face by beginning with his nose. So simply draw a triangle right in the middle. Now let's work on the mouth. You're going to start by drawing a curved line underneath the triangle nose that you just drew. Draw it lightly Draw one more curved line right underneath the top one, mimicking the lines that you just drew. Now it's time for some teeth. So you're just gonna draw a little square shape inside the curved line that you just drew on the left-hand side. Erase that line. And now draw another square like rectangle shape on the bottom part of the curved line. Now I like to put two little curved lines on each side of my mouth. So one on my right and another curved line on my left. Now, time for our eyes. We're going to draw a curved line like a rainbow on the right-hand side. Connect those with one more little curved line. And do the same thing on the left side. In order to make the pumpkin look a little bit more realistic, you're going to add some more curved lines underneath the bottom of the first big curved line that you drew. So just create these little curved lines, giving it some bumps and dimension. Next, draw a few little curved lines on each side of your pumpkin's face. And then go ahead and erase any lines that are still showing at the bottom, really emphasizing those curved lines that you just drew. Now, coming out of the top of our jack-o'-lantern, we want to add some varying species of cacti. First, we're going to start with a large saguaro by simply just drawing one big, tall line that sort of curves around on the left side and then comes back around with a long vertical line on the right-hand side. Next, we're gonna draw two arms, one on the left-hand side doing the same process, drawing a curved line and a straight line, and it's going to curve back around and connect to the cactus that we just drew. 
do the same thing on the right hand side. Remember in nature nothing is ever quite perfectly symmetrical when it comes to plants, so don't feel like they need to be perfectly matching same size or same placement. But again, you're the artist. Next to my saguaro on the left hand side, I'm going to add a barrel cactus by creating just one big curved line or rainbow shape for my barrel cactus shape. In the remaining areas of your composition, include any plants that you find visually interesting, whether it's vines, leaves, flowers, succulents, or more cactus. That is up to you as the artist. When drawing your additional plants, keep it simple. Break it down as simple lines and shapes. Also consider overlapping these different kinds of plants for visual interest and creating a sense of space or depth in your drawing. Next, grab your eraser and erase the guidelines that you drew at the very beginning. Next, it's time to add some decorative details to your cacti. Create some flowers and some lines, as well as thorns. Make the thorns simple lines, or I like to refer to them as letters, whether it's little V's or little X's to depict your cacti's thorns. Now, grab that Sharpie and begin to trace all of the lines that you just drew. Grab that eraser and erase any pencil lines that are still showing through on your drawing. Next, grab any watercolor palette that you have or any kind of paints and begin painting your jack-o'-lantern. Think about making the left-hand side just a little darker than the right-hand side using value while you paint. This helps give your pumpkin and the rest of the objects in your art a more three-dimensional quality. Adding more water often will mute the color, allowing it to be a little lighter, as well as using a color that's a little bit lighter on the color wheel than the color you originally used. For example, if you're using orange, use a little yellow and water it down. Repeat this process all throughout your painting.
If you don't have a particular color that you want to include in your painting, feel free to always get markers and then just add a little bit of water, turning them into watercolor paint. I'm gonna do that now for my flowers. Now let's add a background to our painting. Grab your ruler and your pencil. Let's draw a straight line, sort of separating our foreground from our background, a little less than halfway. Next, let's draw our shadow by drawing a curved line on the left-hand side and another curved line underneath our pumpkin. Next, whatever color paint you want to use, paint your foreground and your shadow. I'm just going to use brown and black for my shadow. In my background, I'm going to paint a night sky using varying colors of purples, blues, and a little bit of teals. Taking my time to build up the pigment, layering each color on top of each other and next to each other. This takes a little bit of extra water on your paintbrush as you go. Allow your watercolors to dry and then go back in with some paint pens and paint brushes to add some additional details. Whether it is a reflection of light coming out of the jack-o-lantern and beautiful stars sparkling in the night sky. Well done my most amazing artists. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing, and I look forward to creating with you again very soon.